new reading series, Dynasty. Amber Kreitzberg writes, quote, Having done just about nothing worth noting so far in life, I wasn't sure what to put for my bio. I did some research as to what others suggest, and I read some author bios. So this is the best I've got. When I was recently elected president of the United Nations, I thought it was funny. It had been a big year for me. I'd won the Nobel Peace Prize for writing a novel in which I invented a country so believable that my readers suspended their disbelief at astounding heights and ended up actually moving to said country, which happened to be Alaska, which is empty except for green lights in the sky and freaks and cabins. And when they found oil in my real fictional country, enough to run the world on, everyone pointed their fingers at me and wanted to give me prizes. So I got the Nobel Peace, then the Pulitzer for the book, and then the Nobel for literature, and then I decided to take up MMA death fighting in the octagon. <laughs> I followed Jean-Claude Van Damme's workout videos, which instructed me to train by kicking palm trees with my shins until the trees fell down. I did. The trees fell down, and natives turned them into ornaments carved into fertility gods and sold them to American larvae? Larva? What's the plural? Larvae. Larvae. American larvae. <laughs> then it was discovered that my, the marrow of my adamantium shin bones, when injected into the cerebrums of babies, could give them the ability to, to grow skin flaps from their triceps to the latissimus dorsi muscles. Soon babies were flying all over the nation. I was in Nevada this morning performing the Heimlich maneuver on a xenomorph when I heard about the reading series, so I lashed a gaggle of flying babies together by the armpit skin flaps and rode them like Huckleberry Finn and Jim on their Mississippi log raft, and here I stand tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Amber Kreitberg. babies, but you know, it's nice to be here. Thank you all for coming. Um, what I'm going to read tonight is a memoir I wrote in a class a few semesters back. I've obviously edited it since then for this. Um, it's called Geneva College and Unexpected Education. It was the summer after my high school education, or high school graduation, and all I wanted to do was sit around at home and figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. I didn't want to search for a job or clean the house or go out in the summer heat to tour a college I knew next to nothing about. I hadn't even chosen the place. Um, <clears throat> the only reason I had filled out the application was because my mother had made me. If you take a year off, you'll never want to go back, she had warned. I wasn't excited to be accepted. I wasn't excited to be touring. And I definitely wasn't excited to be attending in the fall. When that acceptance letter came in, my mother had been ecstatic. My coming here was perfect in her mind. The time it would take to get from here, my house, to the otherwise invisible college campus was 45 minutes. The time it would take for someone to get me in case of an emergency was 10, because my grandmother lives up on the hill. Um, <clears throat> in the end, I grudgingly accepted my fate, but only because I had a promise to keep. I had grown up attending a Baptist church called Rolling Hills Baptist. My year spent there saw me go through all the stereotypical second generation Christian activities. I went to Sunday school, participated in vacation Bible school, watched Veggie Tales. <laughs> then, when I grew older, I became a Christian, was baptized, and went to any and all youth group events. It was at one of these events that I dedicated my first year of college to a Christian institution. I kept my word. I became a freshman writing major at Geneva College in the fall of 2010. That first year sent me into a spiral of realizations. The first was, that I knew nothing about the Word of God. Now, when I say nothing, I don't mean completely nothing. After all, I knew the stories they taught children and the cornerstone verses. I just didn't know there was more to Christianity than that. I thought, as I think most second generation Christians do, that my faith was something I did on the weekends, not something I lived by every day. My faith was only that of a child's. It was in the intro to Bible classes that I found there was more to faith than that. 
I found there were entire centuries in my religion that I didn't even know happened. There were people I didn't hear the names of before, and there were even, I hate to admit, whole verses in the Ten Commandments I'd never seen. So when I took the two classes that freshman year, I ate up every word. Predestination? Judges? The Book of Job? Psalms? Where should I start? I knew nothing, but was expected to know everything in only a semester. My brain filled with so many questions. Some I posed to friends, others I kept silent. It amazed me how much my friends already knew. Unfortunately, talking to them only made my confusion worse. I felt like a Christian who had just come to the faith, faith not one who had been raised in it. The second thing I noticed that freshman year was how different serious Christians were from casual Christians. So many of my new friends had been on mission trips or worked as Christian camp counselors. They had the knowledge and experience I lacked. They were serious about their faith and it leaked into everything they did. Meanwhile, I was lucky if I looked at a Bible each day. My life wasn't Christ-centered. It took the people of Geneva to show me this. That was my freshman year. I began my second year at Geneva College after a summer of avoiding change and facing it. I debated transfer, ignored work options, and lost a handful of friends to other colleges. I had fought every moment of that freshman year. Everything had come rushing at me all at once. There were too many things I didn't know and nowhere I could find the answers. But in the end, I didn't transfer. Instead, that semester I tried blocking out the world. Maybe if I ignored the questions, they would go away. Maybe if I shut my ears, the news wouldn't reach them. I wouldn't be changed by this place like everyone said I would. Geneva wasn't done with me yet. The classes I took at Geneva College always left me thinking. It seemed like all my attempts to block out the world died once I attended each class each day. In biblical literature, my fall semester, we studied the book of Job. I came face to face with a God I couldn't understand, a God who seemed cruel and untrustworthy of his people, a God I didn't want to follow. I had an endless number of questions, and, only an, and the only answer I could find was because God. I hated the answer because God. It didn't actually tell me anything. I would search for answers elsewhere. I looked to my elementary Hellenistic Greek class, and I fell in love. The sound, the shape of the characters, the way they flowed into sentences. Each new thing I learned caused my interest to grow. No matter how hard I tried in the class, I always knew I could try harder. I wanted to push myself more, but other classes were more important. I couldn't wait to read the Word of God in its original language still. I just had to know if it really said what everyone always told me it did. In the back of my mind, I had worried from quite a young age that maybe it was all made up. Maybe Christianity was just another religion about a man trying to be a god. It would be a few more semesters before I found any answers here. Then, I took the British literature classes. God was everywhere. He was in letters, poems, novels, and plays. He was in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, up to today. The British authors we read believed in God. They believed in his saving grace. They believed in his promises. They never doubted him. He was always there, especially in their darkest times. I thought if they believed in circumstances worse than mine, then maybe I could too. I, maybe I could write a story with God's saving grace flowing out of every page like they had. I took creative writing fiction that fall. My hope was destroyed. The first, <laughs> the first story I submitted to the class received all negative reviews. This obviously isn't your calling, one even said in large black letters at the top of the page. I stopped writing for the next two years. When I wasn't in class or with my friends, I was in the dorm room curled up in a ball of silence. I hated that I was still at Geneva College. I hated how the rest of the world was suffering. I hated how I had suffered. I grew angry lying there in my bed each day. What bothered me was the fact that I alone couldn't stop the suffering. I noticed for the first time that the single hero fighting to save the day can't happen in real life. I noticed er, <clears throat> Our fallen world will only continue to fall until God comes again. The world, which I had so successfully ignored for the past three years, was pushing its way to the foreground of my thoughts. I didn't want to know the truth, not if it meant lies, death, and destruction. The second half of my sophomore year, I read Frankenstein. I cried. My roommate Ruth was there through it all, though. 
She sat on my bed next to me. She followed me all around campus as I cursed at the wind, literally. <laughs> she answered my questions the best she knew how. Then she got me to go to church. We tried to find a place I could worship. I thought it was crazy. I had no idea how to choose, but she kept encouraging me. She kept going with me, so I really didn't have a choice. My second year left me teetering on the line between belief and rejection. By some force of God, I returned for yet another year at Geneva <laughs> College, with the idea of transferring still lingering in my mind. I both loved and hated to be back. I loved seeing my friends and favorite professors. I was starting to love chapel. I was going to love this year, but I hated the blind trust of the people. I wanted to full-heartedly believe like they did, but I didn't see how. Their faith amazed me. That semester of my third year, I began to change. I was in my third semester of Greek then, when we had finally learned enough to start reading the Greek New Testament. I was ecstatic. I still remember the first time I read a verse in Greek that I had memorized in English. Such reassurance rushed over me. It really does say that, right there on the page. The hunger to learn more about God took hold of me. Ruth and I found a church to go to. I read the chapel book dug down deep by Joshua Harris. I grasped the concept of brothers and sisters in Christ, and to this day it still makes my heart race. I took communion for the first time as an adult interested in her faith. I did all this, and before I realized it, life seemed to not be so heavy. I felt like I could breathe. I wasn't sad or angry anymore. I was happy to be learning. I was, for the first time I could remember, at peace. During the winter break that year, I did something crazy. I piled into a van with seven complete and utter strangers to go to a Christian conference all the way in St. Louis, Missouri. Going to Urbana 2012 was the most random decision I've ever made, and yet I felt called to go. When I got there, it was, as cliche as it sounds, a whole new world. There were Christians there, my brothers and sisters in Christ, from all over the world. During worship, music was sung in multiple languages. In-depth Bible studies were held every single morning. Thousands of people, more Christians than I'd ever seen in one place, filled the building. The best part was, most of them were around my age. The place was packed with 20-something-year-olds, all eager to serve Christ in whatever way they could. I let loose, and I let my faith define me. I danced as I worshipped. I sang as loud as I could. I prayed as I never had before. I prayed for two hours straight in a room full of utter strangers. I still don't know how I did it, but I felt relieved afterwards. I picked up my Bible and began reading it through for the first time. When I returned from winter break, I got to do the best assignment ever. I wrote a Greek exegesis paper that was 30 pages long. <laughs> it was full of sentence diagrams, history of word meanings, and translations. I loved every second of it, but I haven't admitted it till now. <laughs> My third year left me in a spiritual high. I willingly returned to Geneva for my fourth, but not final, year. The thought of transferring no longer haunting me. After such a spiritual high, I didn't think I could go back to uncertainty, but life works in cycles. The sum that summer, I had failed to convince my family to attend church regularly again, so I didn't either. That, er, I tried to break a bad habit of mine, but with each success came another failure. I waited for the semesters to start, hoping I would be uplifted. I went to church and felt nothing. I went to chapel and was untouched. I went to a Bible study and didn't understand. God was so distant. In church, I couldn't even sing to him. My voice just wouldn't come out. I feared he could no longer hear me. I began to doubt the God who had been so close. I caught myself thinking, this must be a punishment, or maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe it's because I kept failing to break my bad habit. That's why he's so distant. He won't accept me until I'm better. I have to try harder. I have to try. My classes began to suffer. I was lost. That feeling, those thoughts, didn't go away that whole semester. They lurked in the corners of my consciousness, filling my mind with lies. Nothing I did had much effect on them. I simply waited and listened. It wasn't until before spring break that I finally heard the words I was waiting for. It was a communion Sunday. I was told I was already free. That I, wait, sorry. Um, I didn't have to worry about the things I had done. 
Jesus had paid the price for them. He loved me then and always. I was already free. Now that I'm nearing the end of my fifth and final year here at Geneva, I wish I could tell you all that I've broken my bad habit, that my family now attends church every Sunday, that I'm living every day for Christ. However, if there's one thing I've learned in this extra year, it's that faith isn't easy. It's not a switch you can turn at a moment's notice. Faith is, as our chaplain continues to tell me, a process of learning to walk, complete with scraped knees and warm hugs. With half a semester left, all I have to say is I love learning. I'm a student at heart. I take every class I can get my hands on, which is why I'm still here. I plan to go on to grad school for an MFA degree, and I hope to one day become a professor. I'm going to church regularly, and I wish to become more involved there. I still haven't broken my bad habit, but I haven't given up either. I long to learn more about God. And if it wasn't for Geneva College, the professors and friends I had here, and the classes I've taken, I would be a far different person than I am today. So thank you, Geneva. <laughs>